I am annoyed by a person, I think of the dance mum scene when she she just calls her a dingbat. I find the word dingbat so entertaining. Like, no, it's more. Oh yeah, here's the quote. No, I didn't dingbat. Right, mm. that's what I think. A lot. I love how you could pull it up so quickly. Like you had it ready. I didn't have it ready. I just thought of it on the fly because I carry the brunt of this podcast <laughs> on my back, day in, day out. I want someone to analyze that, like we analyze shit in Yugoslav literature. Mm. You know, we should ask our lecturer to listen through our podcast and do an analysis of it. He doesn't deserve that. <laughs> he doesn't deserve that. Why would he deserve that? I thought you liked him. <laughs> My God. Hi, welcome back to Nonsense A Lot. What do you think happened to Princess Kate? Oh my god. One, I think we're being distracted by something. I think this is a ploy, right? Mm. I'm going to go full conspiracy theorist. I'm going to put my tinfoil hat. Right, right, right. I'm going to say that the British government's currently doing something kind of fucked up and they're using the media about the royal family to kind of cover up. Mm. To distract. Committing genocide in somewhere in Africa. Yes. Something mm. like that. You know, they're probably selling more arms to Israel or something like that. Mm. And they're like, you know, don't look. Kate's gone missing. <laughs> but if Kate is dead, I'd like to say this, right? If Kate is dead, she's fully becoming Trisha Paytas's next child. Because do you know what the middle name of Trisha Paytas's next child is? What? Kate. That's horrifying. Elvis Kate Paytas. How does she choose these names? <laughs> Genuinely, I want to know. She was like, is oh. Elvis a girl name? She Gross said that name. it worked for both guys and girls, so she she picked Elvis beforehand, and then she found out it was a girl, and then I think she made the middle name Kate, or something like that. But no, the Kate situation is really funny to me. Yeah. It's just so absurd. But it's also because everyone likes Kate. No one likes anyone else in the royal family, right? Well, Charles and Camilla, go fuck yourself. Why have people taken this so far that maybe she's dead? Because isn't she recovering from abdominal surgery? That's the thing, though, right? They said it was a planned abdominal surgery. Yeah. But they only cancelled her charity events and, like, the events she was going to go to a week before they were meant to occur, which makes it seem like it was a lot less planned than they're letting on. Well, it could have been less planned. Like, it was a situation that developed. But I will say, the reason people think it is because there was a Spanish reporter who came out, right? Mm, okay. He said that um, Kate's not recovering from an abdominal surgery. Instead, she's comatose, right? And she was like, I'm very trusting on my sources, whatever, right? And of course, everyone's like, oh my god, the palace released like um, a thing where they were like, oh, Kate's uh, gone back to, I think Buckingham, mm. uh, to kind of like cover, but then no pictures were taken of her, right, leaving the hospital, and there's like reporters out there 24-7 right now. I like the conspiracy theories about the royal family, because they're always so funny. Do you have, do you believe in any other conspiracy theories? Um, mm, I, I don't know what is considered a conspiracy theory these days. Mm. Uh, I have a lot of hot takes. I have a lot of controversial opinions. Okay. I don't really have that many, you know. Give, give some, give some hot takes. I don't want to fucking live in Buckingham Palace. That place would be a shithole. Absolutely not. Why not? It seems really nice. It's filled with rats, man. Is it? Yes. Historically, it's filled with rats. Well, maybe now they've got a handle on it. I don't think they've got a handle on it. It's historically a rat palace, right? (laughs) Rat-a-tat-ta. Rattus rattus from horrible histories. That's his stomping ground right there, Mm. right? I don't want to live in that. I don't want to live in a place where I know that many rats have lived. But doesn't that apply to, like, really any place? But it's an absurd amount of rats, according to historical documents. Like, an absurd. Like, the rats are in that fucking palace. Mm. Not the humans, right? Not even the rats are of fucking New York City. Could get rid of all the rats that have historically... There's probably rat ghosts there. I don't want the rat ghosts. (laughs) I don't want to live with rat ghosts. You know? Well, maybe the king of... Rat society lives in Buckingham Palace, just like the king of I English society. I don't want to coexist with him. Mm. You know, 
You have to understand, if rats take over the earth, I'm on the forefront. Viva la resistance, or whatever the fuck, <laughs> right? I, I, I'm at the forefront. I'm going full Mad Max. Mm. You know, Furious is coming out soon, so it'd be like, it makes sense. Are you against Ratatouille, then? Against rats cooking? Rats shouldn't cook. I don't want rats to cook. That's right. I don't want rats to cook. The germs... That is literally my dad's argument. He hates Ratatouille for that reason. You have to understand, we don't see Remy bathing once in that film, right? <laughs> he's in the sewers. No, he the... washes his hands, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, the fucking hands. As if he's probably not covered in fleas and ticks, man. More germs Paris... for humans means less nut allergies. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sound argument, actually. You know? Amen. You think he's... You think Remy cooking... Is, is the reason French people don't have nut allergies. Are you just saying all French people don't have nut allergies? Yes. Okay. That's a very bold scientific claim. The only people I know who have had nut allergies are Americans. Mmm. I know, I know a few British people that do. Well. I did food tech at school, right? And I'm not going to say it was, like, great um, in terms of the dishes we made, but they were very big on you're not allowed to bring nuts in there, right? Can you explain what food tech is? Food technology. So it's like you just cooked for school. Cooking with AI. Yeah, it's like a cooking class, but you cook on your own and you have to bring the ingredients from home. (laughs) That sounds like a terrible deal. It's not great, but they were trying to teach us how to make our own food, Mm. you know? I think it's just the choices of dishes that they made us do is really weird. Ratatouille? Ratatouille's in primary school. I'm talking about secondary school here. Oh, what did you have to make? Sloppy Joes. Mm. What did we... What what did we do? Free salads. Did pasta once. (laughs) They wanted to make them, like, culturally diverse. These are things that were, like, or that are popular in the Midwest in America today. Fruit salad. You know, were you making, like, jello salads? No, that's disgusting. Don't fucking suggest (laughs) that, mate. Don't suggest that. My great-grandmother has a recipe that is, like, pretzel surprise salad. And it's, like, strawberry jello with cream and pretzels. What the fuck? (laughs) You've never even had it. It actually is pretty good. What the fuck? What the... Everyone's like, oh my god, America's so good in food. You Brits don't fucking understand food. That! Jello salad. Okay, what cuisine does Britain have? Yorkshire puddings. A good roast, mate, you know? Hash browns, you know? I'd have a hash brown over a fry any day. Hash browns are American. Are they? (laughs) Fuck, they're American. Shit. (laughs) Oh, shit. Fuck. One point to moi. They literally said it's an American invasive item. Invasive? They are the grey squirrel of the breakfast world. (laughs) Fuck. Fuck. Um, Still stand by my point. I prefer a hash brown to a fry. Yeah. Um, What else have we given the world in terms of food? Pigs in blankets. Those those exist in other countries. Sosiska of Tiestia in Russia. It's the same thing. Tiestia? Yes. I'm talking about pigs in blankets, mate. They're fucking sausages wrapped in bacon. Oh. Why are we talking about dough? Because I thought a pig in a blanket was uh, a No, that's a toy in the hole. Now you're confusing me. You're confusing yourself. <laughs> I always thought it was called a... No, you're thinking about a toy in the no, hole. No, see, in my, on my phone, Sosiska of Tiest... Well, because I search in English that's... and it comes up in Russian. <sighs> no, I swear, this is what it shows up. Let me fucking... Let me educate you for a second. Pigs in a blanket in the United States is a small hot dog or other sausage wrapped in pastry, similar to a sausage roll in the UK. We've discovered a cultural difference. Oh, that's weird. Why'd you do that? (laughs) Why'd you do that? (laughs) No, I remember someone asked um, me if, you know, what does the H in Jesus, H Christ mean? You know, and the first I'm thinking, who the fuck says that? Because it's not a thing in Britain. It's just not a thing. Um, America. America, fuck yeah. But I was like, you know, if it would be something. And I understand now that it comes from the initials and it comes from blah de blah But it comes from actual reasons. But I always just thought it was heckin'. Mm. I thought people were going, Jesus heckin' Christ. 
You know? Like, instead of Jesus fucking Christ. This is how I know you've never been to America. It's conversations like this. I mean, I thought it would be obvious. <laughs> you know? Because you're still, like, happy in life? Yeah. Well, yeah. actually, I'm from Britain. That was taken away quite a while ago. Oh, next talking point. What talking points do I have? I'm just going to read through the list and you can pick up what you want. Um, birds and glass, candy kid, drug dealers, light chip scene. <laughs> Sounds like a difficult choice for you. I can't even start to understand what your talking points mean. Well, you got to ask me. Which one? Let's, which one let's go want? with birds and glass. So, okay, I was, I was in Clive Grange yesterday. Mm. And I was waiting for my lecture and I was kind of like looking down. I was like resting my arms on, you know how outside of like A40 and A39, those kind of rooms, they have that like ledge thing and you can just like rest your arms on them. Right, right, right. Yeah, I was there, I was just looking down and I was looking at the glass through, you know, to look at the garden. I was like, oh, that's like the fucking coolest thing, you know? I was like, genuinely, <laughs> glass is so fucking cool and no one talks about it because everyone's just taken it as like a guarantee. Right, that taking be... it for granted. Yes, but it's so cool, right? Because then I was like, is glass a very natural thing? And then I was like, no, because birds die <laughs> every year by like just crashing into it. You know? Have you ever seen a bird smash into glass? Yes, so many times. It's oh, so funny. It's so funny. But, like, as if I should think I'm better than this bird. <laughs> if I was faced by something I did not know existed, right, would I be able to make such a graceful recovery? But, like, how long has glass been around? Why don't the birds learn? I don't know. Because also, like, glass is reflective. Mm. So then they are just, like, stupid. <laughs> Because, like, it's not something that is hard to see, kind of can't go through. Like, if you put a mirror in front of a bird, you mm. know when you put, like, a mirror in front of a dog or a cat or something and it starts to think that it's its rival? Well, it's like putting a putting a cucumber in front of a cat. They think it's snakes. <laughs> really? Yeah. Cats are scared of cucumbers. Right now I've got such a packed schedule of right, writing right, 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 and right. drinking and writing and drinking. Mm -hmm. I'm not an alcoholic. No, 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 of course not. I just, I need to relax. I loved our lecturer saying that all the leaders of the Soviet government were alcoholics. Am I a Soviet leader? Ooh. <laughs> I think that'd be pretty good. If you were a Soviet leader, which one would you be? Like, the, of the famous people in the Soviet government. Who are you posing yourself as? You're opening this up for me getting cancelled very quickly. You answer <laughs> first and then I'll answer. I'm... Hmm. It's actually kind of a hard question to answer. Can I... Oh. But it doesn't have to be based on something, like, legitimate. It could just be feeling. Okay, can I put it like this, right? Hmm. For nothing else about this person other than this one event... I'd want to be Zhukov, mm. right? Because he rode in a, on a white horse upstaging Stalin at, like, you know, the celebration for the war heroes or whatever, mm. right? And that is such a cunt thing to do, <laughs> you know? To just decide I'm going to be the I'm gonna be the one you all look at because I'm the one you all should look at, mm. right? I'm the star of the show. All of these bitches are just, you know, backup dancers. Right. In my performance. Right. That's what I'd want to be. That's iconic. I think based on solely mm -hmm. the Death of Stalin movie mm -hmm. with Steve Buscemi. Yes. I liked his character in that, so I'll go with Khrushchev. Okay. Nothing else about these people. No, no, like, no, no, nothing no, 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 else. no, 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 absolutely nothing else. Um... You know, we do not condone the we actions don't. of the Soviet I've government. I've had to write too many fucking essays about the actions of the Soviet How government. How many times have we studied Soviet history? <laughs> in, in our one and a half years at university. Oh my god. Contemporary world, rose to modernity, Soviet experiment, Yugoslav literature, gulags, uh, deindustrialization, and film. So yeah. seven now. Oh, I thought, okay, I can't count. 
Well, we knew that already. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think is more interesting, candy kid drug dealers or light chip scene? I'll do light chip scene? Yeah. So, okay. This is using the, like, American word for crisp chip, right? Right. And there's this anime called Death Note, and I thought I could talk oh about Lord. it because you don't fucking know anime. <laughs> Where he, like, he's, like, you know, he's thinking through his thing and he does it really dramatically. And he's like, I take a potato chip and I eat it, you know? And I just think that's really cool. I don't know, you're asking me to come up with these, like, podcast topics of, you know. That was all you could come up with. Did you ever have kids that, like, sold candy in your school? Like, I should say sweets, because I'm in the UK. Like, sweets and fizzy drinks, like, they were drugs in your school? Not really. Like, they open up their bag, and they'll, you know, you go to the corner of the playground, and they're like, I've got this... I got that. I got the, you know, 79p fucking Mars. There were trends because the kids who sold sweets, right, they were they were real entrepreneurs. I wonder where they are now. Mm. Um, business majors. They were business majors. Oh, fuck off. That just means they don't do anything. <laughs> this is complete business major slander right here. But anyway, they, they moved from... They did fidget spinners. Mm. I remember they sold fidget spinners. On the bus, a lot of them would charge, if your phone was on low, low percentage, they'd have like a massive power bank charger. These are know? actual entrepreneurs. They're about to go on that show where like Scrub Daddy sold. What's it called? Shark Tank. They're going on The Apprentice. That's where they are now. They mm. can't do math, but they can sell. You know? Yeah. Are they like finance bros on Wall Street? Oh, gross. London Stock Exchange. That's where they are now. Yeah. They were really, they were real entrepreneurs. They'd mm. go to Budgeons before school started. And, oh, this is the biggest thing that was in my school, right, mm. in terms of the trade, in terms of how people would get money. <laughs> the right? economy. The economy. It's that for my school, the lunch line was split into three different parts because mm-hmm. there was a lot of students, you know. Mm. Yeah, yeah. There was an outside part, there was uh, an inside part, and then there was the part to actually receive the food. Right. Right. And, of course, you could skip the line, but there would be, like, people watching and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And the way they stopped people from just going in the line inside is for the outside line, they give you a ticket. Right. Right, and it, it'd say the day of the week on it. So it was, like, different coloured paper with, like, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever. Right, right. And so you'd have to give that in for them to let you in mm-hmm. to the actual kind of, like, cafeteria. This sounds like a very... This is very serious. Thing. It was a very serious thing, you know? A lot of people, they'd steal the tickets or they like, you know, they'd get caught for having not for not having a lunch ticket, they then use a razor to split them in <laughs> half, right? Yeah. And they make a collection of them so they could sell them, you know, when it was a rainy day or something like that, to lower school kids so they could get in. That is crazy. I had some, you know? You did this practice. I didn't do the practice, but I did I did collect when I wanted to. See where you are now. Where am I? You're studying history and East European cultural studies at the University of Nottingham and doing a podcast with your housemate. Do you think this is a successful career post your secondary lunch token stealing? I don't know at this point. So I guess, you know, thank you to my old school. I'm not going to say their name um, because they I remember one of my friends uh, sued them and they Mm. did retaliate against them for quite a while. Um, But I'd like to say thank you for all the funny stories. You know, I haven't even scratched the surface. All the school trauma has only made us into funnier comedians on this podcast. Have they? <laughs> Have they? <laughs> it's not like we're putting any jokes to them. We're just saying out loud, this is what happens. And it was a very confusing experience. I will say a couple of mu- music teachers went missing. Like Kate Middleton. And we're, and we're back at that point in conversation. Let's end it there, because I'm tired. Oh. Thank yous for the uh, the viewers. Um, fuck. What have I been watching this week? You don't have to... Thank you to everybody who has been listening to our podcast. Uh, thank you to Ro- Young Royals. I'm really excited to watch the third season. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you to the people that made uh, Late Night with the Devil. I really want to watch it in cinemas when it comes out. Mm. Um, thank you... What the fuck else has been on TV? 
Um, thank you to the reunions, right? Thank you to the reunion of Love is Blind, very entertaining, you know. Uh, all despicable people, but it's all fine. It's all good, it's all right. dandy, you know. Um, and, yeah, I think that's me. That's me done. Do you not have, like, real-life people you want to thank? Or do you not interact uh, with real-life people? Oh, I do. Fine. Thank you to everyone that's been helping me write my essay about With Nail and I... Mm. And the kind of bleakness of British comedy in the 80s. Oh, do you want that? Do you want that? Is that funny for you? <laughs> Is that funny? Does that make you laugh? Does that make you go hee hee ha ha? Does it? Have you seen the ASMR videos where it's like, ASMR, your boyfriend, um, like, gets in a car crash? Yes, you've shown me these. ASMR, your boyfriend gets hit by a frying pan. ASMR, the world blows up in an atomic war. ASMR, your boyfriend hits you with a frying pan. (laughs) Change perspective. I really like them. Is that like the white noise you go to sleep to that? (laughs) Yeah. I just have it next to my bed. I went to sleep to the Pirates of Penzance last night. Mm. That was the music you heard the other day and said you thought we were being attacked. Yeah. Oh, fuck. We're getting attacked. The pirates of whatever the fuck you said are coming. Penzance! It's such a famous piece of media. Do you actually not know what the pirates of Penzance is? You think I listened to classical music when I was a kid? It's not classical music. I was listening to Raw by Katy Perry, now. Do you know who Gilbert and Sullivan are? Oh, yeah. It's, oh, it's musical then. It's a comic opera. You look in pain. I'm gonna go back I to, am in pain. I'm gonna go back to listening to your boyfriend gets hit by a car. ASMR. I can't believe so wait, now that I've said Gilbert and Sullivan, do you know what the Pirates of Penzance is? I I know who Gilbert and Sullivan are. There's a reason why I don't let my dad listen to this podcast.